Today, I'll be starting an absolutely insane mission to find every single shiny Pokemon available in the Teal Mask and complete the Kitakami shiny decks. This will, without a single doubt, be my longest and most difficult shiny hunting challenge by far, so you're not gonna wanna miss this absolute shiny marathon. I decided to get right to hunting, seeing as completing this challenge is projected to take over a hundred hours. And we started with a Carbink, who I found in only 15 minutes using the picnic method in this cave. It honestly has such a cool and underrated shiny, and with one shiny ticked off the board, we now only have 194 more to go. Yay! For those wondering, this is literally every single Pokemon in the Kitakami Pokedex, minus the five shiny locked ones. And the only rule I'm giving myself for this challenge is that every shiny must actually be caught in Kitakami, so no going back to Paldea, even if it makes certain hunts easier. I decided to make my second hunt focused on two different bug types, looking for both shiny Grubbin and Cutiefly at the same time. I wasn't too worried about Grubbin, because he has a pretty recognizable shiny, who I spotted in around an hour and a half into the hunt. But Cutiefly, on the other hand, is known for being one of the smallest Pokemon of all time, and its shiny isn't as obvious. Thankfully, I found a different location to specifically spawn the fly without all the Grubbin, and we found the shiny after half an hour. We then evolved it into Robombi, and then Grubbin into Chargebug, who was one of my favorite Gen 7 shinies with the best cry ever. <laughs> and then into a Vikavolt. I didn't mention this earlier, but evolving a Pokemon will keep their previous evolutions ticked off the list, because this challenge is insane enough as is. Next, I hunted for the baby Pokemon Cleffa during the night around the Crystal Pool. Fairy encounter boosts would make them super common, and oh my god, their evolution line dances under the moonlight. That is adorable. We managed to find the green-eared baby pretty quickly, and we then had to bring up its friendship to become a Clefairy and then Clefable. All right. So a lot of the hunts in this video are gonna be pretty straightforward. However, there's a handful of Pokemon that caused extremely difficult challenges, and we're about to experience our first of many ridiculous cursed hunts. Culprit number one, Salazzle. Believe it or not, she can't be found anywhere throughout Kitakami. She's in the Pokedex, sure, but that's only because you can find Salander in certain areas, and seeing as she can't spawn anywhere, she also cannot have outbreaks. This is obviously a problem, because if you know anything about Salander, it's that it can only evolve if it's a female, and that's only a 10% chance. So unlike in Paldea, where Salazzle can spawn in the wild and have outbreaks, we actually need to find a shiny female Salandit. Now based on the odds, that should only take us around 10 shinies to find, right? Spoiler alert, the odds were not in my favor. The only good thing about this was that with fire encounter boosts, we could exclusively get a bunch of the lizards to spawn climbing up this mountain very easily, and the shinies were showing up extremely quickly to begin with. Seeing as just over two hours into this hunt, we had somehow scored ourselves nine shinies, all of them being male, unfortunately. Fast forward an hour and we had reached our 10th shiny, hitting the average odds for a female. Unfortunately, this was not it. The hunts were then starting to get much slower and it was getting extremely repetitive already. Shinies 11 to 14 took two hours to find and to no surprise, were all male. And fast forward another half an hour to shiny 15, who believe it or not, was male. Surely we'll actually get a female in the next shiny, right? Well, in fact, our next shiny wasn't even Salandit. It was actually this Growlithe that would occasionally spawn in this one spot. I mean, I'll take it because we still need him for the challenge. But no, for real, this hunt was really getting to me. Not because I've lost patience in looking for the female, but because that even after evolving the Growlithe to Arcanine and ticking Salandit off the list, we still had 183 more shinies to go. And this is already after nearly nine hours of hunting. I just had to move on to other hunts to actually feel like I was making progress. So I started to look for more new and returning Pokemon Pokemon added in the DLC, starting with Vullaby. I used Dark Type and Counter Boost to get as many to spawn as possible, and the baby Vulture appeared in around 40 minutes. We then evolved it into Mandibuzz, who actually looks pretty cool. And then I moved on to a Sawaddle outbreak. Any Pokemon from the Unova region is one that I'll always be happy to hunt, seeing as Black was the first Pokemon game I ever played. And just like Vullaby, the shiny took 40 minutes to find. It's a pretty strange shiny, and the same thing could be said about its evolution, Swadloon. Unfortunately though, despite how much I love Levani as a Pokemon, this shiny kind Kinda sucks. Our next three hunts would all be nighttime themed, starting with Hoot Hoot. I again found a great spot to isolate the spawns, and this yellow owl shiny actually looks so good. Unfortunately, Knocked Out makes it a lot less vibrant and more of a gross yellow color. Then came Volbeat, who would spawn all around these rice fields, and damn, this is actually a really cool looking shiny. Illumise was, for whatever reason, a lot more rare of a spawn, so I decided to find an outbreak to hunter instead of type encounter boosts. And damn, this shiny's even better! Look how cute they are together. I then used Fighting 
Fire Boost to isolate Timber Spawns just past the Kitakami Hall. And after finding this pretty mid-shiny, we then turned him into its pretty mid-shiny evolutions. Gerda, and then after trading him away and back, Conkelder. The next hunt, I ended up finding two shinies I wasn't even looking for, seeing as I went to the Paradise Barrens to use Rock-type Boosts for a shiny Nose Pass. But right after I teleported there, I came across a green Sand Shrew. A pretty ugly shiny, but after evolving it to Sand Slash, it was another two Pokemon we could easily tick off. And the second unexpected shiny was Pseudo Wudo because he'd sometimes spawn as well. This one wasn't as useful as Sand Shrew, seeing as this is a final evolution Pokemon, and we're still gonna have to hunt for Bonsly at some point. And then the yellow-nosed Compass showed up in around 10 minutes. And if you know anything about me, I love yellow shinies. So this and Progo Pass are top tier shinies in my book. Here's another look at how our progress is going. Yeah, it doesn't even look like we've scratched the surface of the shiny decks. 12 hours in and still 166 more shinies to go. Our next hunt was actually a pretty unique one. So you may have heard of the wild level 100 Magikarp that could be encountered in Pokemon Platinum or Black and White 2. And well, it's actually made a return in Kitakami. Yep, Magikarp can be level 100 in the wild. And many people have challenged themselves to hunt it in its shiny form. Now we're not going to be doing that today, but there's definitely a small chance we could just get it now. And when I saw that metallic gold Magikarp, I could not believe what level it was. 44. It was level 44. Well, luckily I love Magikarp, and we evolved him into the iconic Red Gyarados. I then went to the Infernal Pass, where we could exclusively get Geodude spawning with encounter boosts, and we managed to find the Yellow Nugget in only 15 minutes, who then became a Graveler and needed trading to become a Golem. Next up, I went to an Ekans Outbreak, which wasn't the best, but I luckily found this long boy after half an hour. And although the Green Snake is pretty cool, the Yellow Arbok I think looks fantastic. And wow, I'm actually surprised I've gone this long in Kitakami without hunting for an adorable tiny whooper. Such a cute little guy whose pink shiny avoided me for nearly two hours. But the wait was totally worth it for this baby axolotl. And my love for this Pokemon continues through its evolution because Quagsire is just such a funny chill guy. Just look at him. And then came a shiny that doesn't feel remotely new to Kitakami for me. And that would be Swinub, seeing as he accounts for around 50% of the shinies I find in the Alabaster Icelands and Legends Arceus. We eventually found this green pig thing and moved on to hunting a little acorn. I honestly really like CDOT's evolution line so I was hyped to find the shiny in around 40 minutes. And with these two caught, we could evolve both of them twice to tick off an extra four shinies. I ended up going for Pichu next because I spotted an outbreak. And boy, if you're familiar with shiny Pichu, you'll know that this will be quite an eye-straining hunt. I was super cautious about every spawn I could find, bringing my face closer and closer to the screen to check if they looked even remotely different. And thankfully, it only took 45 minutes to find. Still quite a while, but it honestly could have taken way longer based on how slowly I was checking them. We then became his best friend to become a Pikachu, and then I gave it a Thunderstone to become Raichu. And believe it or not, our next hunt was probably our quickest one this entire challenge. Because after heading to this lake where you can catch Monkey Dory, you can use Ghost Type Boost to get a bunch of the Sensu form of Oracoria to spawn. And the shiny popped up in just one minute! The Sensu form is without a doubt my favorite of the four, and the same thing could be said about the shiny. It just looks amazing. Heading back to the Infernal Pass, we look for the monochrome version of Mimikyu, using the rest of the boosts on my sandwiches after getting Oracoria. Corio. Mimikyu has always been one of my favorite Pokemon, and him having a completely grayscale shiny, I think suits him so well. And then our next three hunts were found using a single fire type sandwich. Then being a shiny Vulpix who appeared in just two minutes, followed up by a Houndour only five minutes later, and then going back to where we hunted Mimikyu, a shiny Slugma Balls after 20 minutes. They were each single evolution Pokemon, so we scored ourselves a beautiful Ninetales, Houndoom, and Makago, who I each loved the shinies of. That meant since our last update, another 26 shinies shinies were ticked off the list. 19 hours in and still 140 more to go. We've only checked off 28% of the decks so far. Seeing how lucky we were getting with the other fire type shinies, I decided to give Salander another crack in the hopes of finally getting a female shiny. Our first white lizard came in just 30 seconds and to nobody's surprise was a male. Another hour and a half passes by and we had checked off another six shinies with absolutely no female in sight. I now own 22 male shiny Salander and have officially gone over double odds. This is getting ridiculous. However, my luck would soon provide me with relief, but for a totally different and unrelated Pokemon. I was getting bored of hunting Salander again, so I moved on to someone else I was absolutely dreading just to get it over and done with. The cursed hunt of shiny Aracuda. If you've shiny hunted in Scarlet and Violet before, you will know that water hunts absolutely suck. Okay, reasons why the Aracuda hunt scared me. One, water in these games is unacceptably laggy. Two, Aracuda is tiny. Three, 
Aracuda's shiny isn't very noticeable considering its size. Four, Aracuda will usually be under the water's surface, making them look a lot more blue and closer to the shiny than they should. And I need to keep straining my eyes to see if it's normal or not. And five, the best place to hunt them in Kitakami is the Crystal Pool. You know, probably the most laggy location in all of Scarlet and Violet. This was projected to be one of the worst hunts of all time. And it definitely was. For only 25 minutes, thankfully. I got incredibly lucky because just watch this. Oh, come on. Oh wait, that's the shiny! What? I just accidentally bumped into that. Oh my god. I somehow bumped into the shiny on complete accident and it showed up way quicker than I was expecting. I was so happy with how immediately this hunt ended and we evolved it into a Barrascuta. We may have gotten lucky this time around, but Tynamo? Oh god, that's gonna be torture. Okay, I think it's time to rapid fire a couple of things. Because as you may have noticed, even at this fast pace, I don't think we're gonna be able to fit everything into one video. Our next hunt was for my all-time favorite shiny family, the Roltz line. And we managed to find a shiny female in around an hour and a half, who became a curlier and then into a perfection of a shiny Gardevoir. Galate's just gonna have to wait to be ticked off because I then went looking for a Spoink, who was caught in under 20 minutes, followed up by this amazing looking Noibat, who has one of my favorite shinies in X and Y, and then came a Bronzor 8 minutes after. I evolved each of them into a Grumpig, Noivern, and Bronzong, with Noivern definitely being the goaded of the three. Next came the Steel Gummy Worm, Orthworm, whose blue shiny just looks incredible. And speaking of blue shinies, I managed to find a Pornyard within 5 minutes. I evolved him into Bishop, and then had to do the weird evolution quest by giving him a leader's crest and knocking out 3 Bishop in a horde of Pornyard to become the badass samurai looking King Gambit. And the last shiny before we have another look at our progress will be Pachirisu. This one was painful and was by far the longest I had gone this entire challenge without seeing any shinies. Basically, outside of Masui Town, I can use electric type boosts and exclusively spawn the little squirrel, but the pink shiny just would not spawn. I don't even want to know how many times I lapped this area because I went over three hours with nothing to show for it. I don't know where my luck had gone and the worst thing is, Pachirisu is a Pokemon without any evolutions, so it's only going to tick one Pokemon off the board as opposed to some others that can tick off three with their evolutions. I eventually finally found this little rodent and you're just lucky I really like your shiny, buddy. We had now ticked off 71 of the 195 targets on the board, over 26 hours in, and that's only 36% of the shinies collected. I don't know why I didn't expect this to be such a gauntlet. However, our next hunt had something pretty crazy happen. Basically, as I was hunting for one of my favorite generation one Pokemon, coughing, I ended up finding a shiny after around 45 minutes. His turn Turquoise color scheme with the purple smoke honestly looks so good. So I decided to get a few selfie shots with him. And as I exited the camera to go on to catch him, I spotted a second one off in the distance. I absolutely love it when two shinies spawn at the same time. Also, you wouldn't believe the amount of times I had to reload the game due to them killing themselves with memento or explosion. I think it was like six or seven times between the two. We evolved one into wheezing and then Lotad was next. And if you saw my last video, you'll know how much I love this extremely weird looking shiny that appears as if his textures were corrupted or something. And because you can't use the camera in the water, I had to get a shot of him from the land and it made it look like he was just staring into my soul. He then became a Lombre and Ludicolo and we're going to be continuing the water theme for quite a while. Ducklet was next and was hunted using the isolation method. And we found this perfection of a pink baby in just five minutes. Unfortunately, evolving it into a Swanner is nowhere near as cool, but it's still a great shiny nonetheless. The next two water type hunts were also extremely quick. Seeing as I found a shiny Surska in an outbreak in just 10 minutes. And literally as I was attempting to knock out 60 corefish in this outbreak, the shiny popped up in only two minutes. He's such a silly little crab and I love him. I then evolved them both into shinies who I really don't like. And it's not hard to please me when it comes to Pokemon and shinies, so that's just saying something about these two. To end off this water type shiny exhibition, we hunted for Poliwag, a shiny that is actually pretty cool and is quite noticeable in most games. But due to the lighting and textures in Scarlet and Violet, it is much, much harder than I was expecting. Thankfully, I had a good outbreak and due to shiny hunting literally being my job, I was able to spot the very subtle difference when I passed by. Poliwag is such an adorable little guy and we evolved him into Poliwhirl and then Poliwrath. I heard you can apparently hunt Politoed on its own, so I didn't bother with finding a second shiny in this outbreak. Okay, so I actually did plan on getting another water type next and that would be Feebas. However, hunting Feebas regularly would be pure evil because he is such a rare spawn. But if you're lucky enough to get an outbreak in the right spot, you can get the shiny with ease. The only problem is actually 
actually getting an outbreak. For some reason, it is like impossible to find, at least from my experience. I had level three water type boosts on and spent two hours date skipping in the hopes of finding one. And to my surprise, it just never showed up. Literally just getting the outbreak is taking significantly longer than what I'd imagine the actual hunt to take. So I gave up on that idea for the time being and just went on to a different hunt. Unfortunately though, even after two hours of date skipping, our next target took almost two and a half hours to find. And that would be Petalil, a Pokemon with a pretty underwhelming shiny that's just not that great, but at least its evolution Lilligant looks much nicer. I then used ground type boosts in the Felhorn Gorge area to get ourselves a beautiful shiny Barboach, who is much less annoying than Aracuda, seeing as it's in a significantly less laggy area and the shiny is impossible to miss. And then for whatever reason, the cool yellow features go away and turn into this monstrosity of a shiny Whiskash. Next came the strange tentacle lookalike, Toad's Cool, who was found in 40 minutes yet again using the outbreak method. And honestly, his and Toad's Cruel shinies are actually extremely cool. And speaking of outbreaks, we then hunted for the 69th Pokemon in one, Bellsprout. Pretty sus if you ask me, Pokemon. It was actually a pretty good outbreak because I could spawn all the Pokemon and then just walk into the Loyalty Plaza, which would despawn them all and repeat. But despite that, I was getting pretty unlucky again. 40 minutes in and we ended up finding another shiny Sawaddle. And then the yellow leafed pea shooter took another hour and a half to find. I wasn't too fussed though because I love me my yellow shinies. But why doesn't it stay yellow in Weepin' Bell and Victory Bell? It's honestly such a downgrade. At this point, we had checked off 94 shinies, meaning 101 remain. Almost halfway there now. We were also 34 hours in now, which was actually a much faster pace than I was anticipating. The next hunt was pretty funny because I just couldn't stop getting shinies I wasn't looking for. Basically, I had this Spinarak outbreak who I was super excited to hunt for because I love shiny Spinarak. However, when I left the outbreak to despawn all the spiders, I first stumbled upon a shiny Yunma, which is great because we still need him, and then a second blue Yunma only 8 minutes later, who we evolved into Yun Mega, and then literally 20 minutes later, a duplicate shiny Lotad. This clearly wasn't the best outbreak, so I decided to find another one, yet the blue Spinarak still took over an hour and a half to find, but it was totally worth the wait for this absolute beauty, who we evolved into Ariados, which also looks incredible. I then found a Litwick outbreak near the Crystal Pool and hunted it during the night. We managed to come across this baby candle after no longer than half an hour, and we evolved it into a lamp, and then into a chandelier. And you know what? On the topic of fire types, I think it's time we finally return to our hunt for a female shiny Salander. This time, I wouldn't be given up until I find that elusive monster. I can't really say I was too thrilled to be doing laps around Oni Mountain again, but my determination to get Salazzle ticked off the list outweighed my fear. Another two hours went by with another five shiny male Salander. This is actually getting out of hand. Were my sandwich boosts somehow preventing females from spawning? No, it couldn't be. I kept accidentally bumping into regular females all the time. Time. Another hour and a half of boredom flew by with yet another four male lizards. I was now over triple odds for a female, but thankfully, only three minutes after my most recent shiny, I found the target I never thought I'd find. Oh, oh my god, yes! Finally, we got the female shiny. Oh my god, it's about time. That is ridiculous. We finally got the female shiny, meaning we could finally evolve it into this beautiful white Salazzle who originates from the Kitakami region. I can guarantee not many people have this in their collection. And with over 40 hours going into these hunts so far, with exactly 93 shinies on our checklist remaining, including a bunch I'm sure are gonna cause a lot of trouble, I ask you to subscribe to the channel and be on the the lookout because I think we're gonna have to continue this gauntlet in a part two.